I love strange media. There's something about shows like Courage the Cowardly Dog or games like Katamari Damacy that just click with me. It's probably something to do with nostalgia and experiencing these odd affairs at a time when they just seem so magical and scary. But nevertheless, they're firmly imprinted in my mind and have drastically shaped my taste today. My last video was on a game called Within the Backrooms, and in it, I talked a bit about another game that I was inspired by called LSD Dream Emulator, which while I never played it, I still have many fond memories of watching YouTube videos about it. LSD Dream Emulator was less a game and more an art project. It was created by an artist, Osamu Sato, and was based off a dream diary kept by an employee at the company that developed the game. In the game, you're taken through many surreal environments that are some of the closest representations of dreams I've seen in any piece of media, period. Over the last couple years, the backrooms have become an extremely popular horror genre, and I almost see LSD Dream Emulator as the original adaptation of the backrooms. The worlds inside it are just so odd and oftentimes unsettling. It has the same feeling as the liminal spaces the backrooms were based off. There's dozens of games inspired by LSD Dream Emulator, my last video, again, being on one of them, and I wanted to find the most unique one, and I think I accomplished that. Introducing 21 The World, a free game on itch.io created by LSD Dev. There's not much I could find on this game, and there's very few videos that talk about it. One video, however, is actually how I found out about the game, so subscribe to Married to My Chair, all their videos are awesome, and if you like my videos, you'll like theirs. Anyways, without further ado, let's dive into one of the oddest games I've ever experienced. 21 The World. The game opens to this staticky collection of TVs with the game's title proudly displayed on top. There's no option shown, but eventually I figure out you have to press enter to start and... Yeah, this guy with the Witch Doctor mask is gonna show up a lot. It's kinda like this game's version of the Gray Man from LSD Dream Emulator. It then shows this FMV of what I assume to be the developer's real life room, complete with demon masks and anime figurines. Now we're in the actual game, and it's a one-to-one -one recreation of the room we just saw with a couple minor quirks. I think it's really cool that the dev added his own bedroom as a starting location for the game. It adds a little personality and makes it feel like you're experiencing LSD devs, dreams that are the figments of their own imagination. Over here on the dresser, there's copies of Nintendo and PlayStation games, and these are absolutely everywhere. It's actually one of my favorite parts about the game, and adds more to the surreal nature of it. Seeing something I recognize from real life in a game as surreal as this one, really adds to the dreamlike aura it's giving off. Later in the game, one of the areas that caught me the most off guard was the mall, which had a video game store with real ads and real game boxes. Here's an ad for Smash 4, here's an ad for Persona, and here's an ad for Monster Hunter. Over on this TV is footage of a Smash Melee game, and here's Victoria's Secret. The game doesn't care about copyright, and I absolutely love it. It's very clearly under fair use, and the game is, again, free, so I don't think it's breaking any laws, but it's just cool to see all this stuff in a game that fits so perfectly with it. Anyways, back where we began, we look out the window, and in our average American suburban neighborhood, we see this cutout of a Renaissance-style guard. We also find this tarot card on the bedside table. Tarot cards are really the main theme of this game, the title itself being a reference to them. A lot of the characters you come across in the game are cutouts from tarot cards, and some of the worlds give that astrological... I don't really know how to describe it, but the vibe that tarot cards also give off, like a Renaissance astronomer. It's a really cool theme that's a nice spin when compared to the themes of LSD Dream Emulator. Most games that are a spin on LSD Dream Emulator keep that Japanese theme, but this game took that same idea and added a completely new and unique theme. Leaving our room into the rest of the house, we find this shadowy figure playing the guitar, music being another reoccurring theme throughout the game. Later on in this TV world, we find two TVs labeled 12 Toes and Ra Ra, and playing them shows this home video of two men in masks playing music together. This guy is wearing a witch doctor mask, and I assume he has some connection to the figure we saw on the title screen. There's also a couple of characters you come across that play music or dance to a record, like over here I stumbled across a frog party around Hatsune Miku. Yeah, it's actually just a Hatsune Miku. Did I mention this game is a bit odd? We leave the front door of the house and are greeted by this very bright scene with more bloom than oblivion. This weird fountain thing is the only thing we could interact with, and it brings us to the sea of doors with... Is that Zelda music playing? The game has some very clear inspiration from The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, lifting some of the areas like this witch's hut and having boxes of the game in a bunch of different places. It's my personal favorite Zelda game, mostly because of how weird it is, and 21 The World has a really similar theme. I choose to go in this black door and it brings us to this weird uh, pipe thing. 
I don't really know how to describe it, but I hop on this platform and go through this electrical outlet to this other area that I also really can't put into words. This isn't even weird by the game's standards, by the way. Clicking on this spiral that kind of looks like Polywirl, it transports us to a foggy concrete room with distant muttering. We go down these stairs and open this door, but it sends us down a pit full of bubbles. They just have an old jug and they put the bird in it, have a pee, cap it off. And once it's full, they just drill the fucking thing out in the highway. The screen fades and we're, we're on the moon. This game sends you to the most random places you could possibly imagine. One second you're in a karate dojo, the next you're in a cave with a massive flower that has arms sticking out of it, coming at you, then teleporting you back to your bedroom. You think it's over and you just woke up from your dream, but when you click on these masks, you're in this fiery mask world with a painting of Jesus Christ in the mask's mouth, and clicking on Jesus, you're in some kind of temple that has a priest with no eyes jump scare you. I played a couple games in the surreal LSD dream emulator type genre that's became semi-popular over the past couple years. One of them I was actually part of the way through making a video on, and it was called the Indigo Parallel, which has a much more traditional take on these type of surreal games. That's not to say I wouldn't recommend playing through it because it's still a very good game with a unique story and some really cool worlds to explore. I may finish the video I was working on one day, but Hey Peter made a really good deep dive into it that I would highly recommend checking out. Eventually we make our way back to our house and it looks a little different. If we enter our room, are we finally away from our nightmare? No, I, I think we're dead. Even worse, we have a platforming level. This truly really reminds me of those incredibly different platforming levels from Mario Sunshine, and this isn't easy either. I'd be lying if I said I finished this in the first try because it took me more than a couple, and I'm not ashamed to admit that. I'm honest. Finishing it, we even get an applause and are transported back to our room, but it looks a little different again. The front door is locked, and if we touch this eye, we get sent to the mall we talked about earlier. We go into the Victoria's Secret, and it brings us to this Halloween world. We go back to the Hatsune Miku place, and now we're back in our room, and it's space-themed and all stretched out at... At least we have an ultra-wide monitor now. Clicking on what was our window, we get transported to what's probably the best area you get to visit in this game. It has a couple variations, but this is a night one, and yeah, those planets are the creepiest thing in this game so far. We see these tarot card cutouts lined up with three massive ones on the horizon. And if we go in the middle... Well, I don't know how we survived that, but we're all that's left on this island. There's nothing but skeletons and bare dirt left. And after walking for a while, we get transported back to our room. Screw all this, I'm gonna hop on my computer. Except that brings you to another world too. This one is a TV static one, and we will become very familiar with it because almost every TV or computer you interact with brings you here. I think it's time to get out all my grievances with the game. Like that there's no pause, and even worse, there's no settings. Your default mouse sensitivity is way too high, and if you didn't read through the itch.io page, you wouldn't know that you changed the sensitivity with O and P. And you may have asked yourself, how do you save? You don't. I mean, you do save, but you don't actually save if you exit the game it's gonna kind of auto save but it doesn't tell you that how do you exit the game escape escape closes the game there's a couple more worlds that also become just a little repetitive like this maze one or these couple of water themed areas that i just kept being sent to but those are the only real major problems with this game and considering it was made by one person i'd say that's not half bad the game also hasn't been updated in years and i doubt it ever will again I'll talk more about that later though. One of the cooler aspects of this game is that there's easter eggs. I'm pretty sure there's more than what I found, but if you type Vine Sauce into the console by pressing enter, you get transported to the mall with this really cool tribute to Vine Sauce Vinny who played the game on stream. Also, there's the absolute hardest challenge I've ever faced in a game, and it's a so Reese's Puffs Cow Easter Egg. I'll let you guys find this one on your own, but it's quite the challenge, so uh, be prepared. Back in the TV world, there's all these black and white TVs, and clicking on them shows these scenes. This one has some of the tarot people walking away from this prison cell. This one shows a group of people dancing and playing Smash Bros in an alleyway. And then a baby jump scares you. This one shows that weird pipe world with this guy popping in and this one teleported us to a world where more babies jump scared us. For my other playthroughs that doesn't usually happen so we go back and click the TV again and it shows a hospital room with one of these shadowy figures coming out of the skeleton which kind of answers why these guys are all over the place. It then played an FMV with I think a man but I hope a mannequin with the Russian word for 
ending on it. It kind of reminds me of the game Hong Kong 98, where if you died, it literally just showed a dead body. Not saying this is an actual dead body, but you get the gist. This next TV shows a clock tower type area with whatever is going on here, and the final TV plays another FMV, which honestly, this is my favorite FMV in the game. It had a retro claymation vibe, kind of like the Rudolph Christmas special, and is a bit creepy while still being charming. Then the actual show plays, and it's all these tarot cutouts lined up like they're ready for battle. Also, I tried the TV with the title screen on it, and it plays nothing. Jumping off this static world, we end up at this psychedelic space world with the only real puzzle in the game where you have to move these boxes around and then get up on this platform. Then using a cutout of Billy Harrington, we have to get across this gap and, and I feel miserably the first time around, but the second encounter I had with this area, I made it and was rewarded with the, the door map again. Would have liked something cooler, but I guess I have the satisfaction that I made it and accomplished something as my real reward. So I choose a door to go into and there's that weird mask guy again. Staring at us ominously through a cage, we get transported to this dark prison with more Billy Harringtons. And at the end of this hall is the mask guy in a prison cell and going up to him plays this very ominous FMV of him just walking around and looking all scary. Then we get another FMV of Ronald McDonald with a scary uh, order screen. The FMVs of the Masked Man are the only real story we're exposed to in this game, and I could spend hours theorizing on why he's here and what he wants to do with the player, but that's about all there really is to the game. I'm leaving a bit out because it's a really interesting experience that I think all of you should go out and try for yourselves. And I played for hours and continuously found new and unique areas. The developer right now is sporadically working on a sequel to 21 The World called 19 The Sun and it's an a lot more gamey style first person shooter that has many of the same themes as 21 The World. But that's about all for the video. Links are in the description so check out those, don't forget to subscribe and spread the word. Enjoy your lives. came towards me with the light like it was the light light of heavenly grace and the first thing that flashed into me gulliver was that i'd like to have her right down there on the floor with the old in out real savage <laughs>